Hey there friends, Foster the Canadian here, and we are on week 7 of Fridays with Foster. Seven weeks in a row, I couldn't have done it without you guys. I really couldn't have done it without you guys. You guys sent me in all the uh, stories, and you asked me advice, and I really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, Fridays with Foster, if you're not familiar, is a weekly series in which you guys send me questions, or ask me advice, or just share a story. And I give you my take on it, I try to help you guys out, and, uh, play Halo. Now, <laughs> One note about the gameplay is, uh, it, this is on Ragnarok, this is actually the first Ragnarok gameplay that I have put on my channel, and the reason being, I am horrible at Ragnarok. I'm not sure if it's psychological or what, but something about this map, I do not have good games on Ragnarok. Even when it was, uh, Valhalla back on Halo 3, I did not have good games on it. It's not like I don't like the map, I'm fine with the map, it's just, for whatever reason, when I get in there, I just, I, I can't play, I lose all ability to play. So you're going to notice that most of the game I'm in the ghost or uh, failing with the sniper. I, I zoomed in. I don't even think I took a shot. But anyway, enough about the gameplay. Let's get on with what this is about, the stories. I'd like to call this first story, Kidnap Kidders. I have a story about how I was kidnapped. So it's late one night about three years ago, just around the time I started watching Red vs. Blue. And it's about 3 a.m. My parents had left on vacation two nights before. I'm in the middle of an episode of Season 5 when I hear a thud. I turn down the audio for a couple of seconds to see if the sound continues. I wait about 10 seconds and nothing. So I turn my audio back up and continue watching. After about another 30 seconds, I hear another thud. This time it's closer. So I pause the episode and start walking out of the room. Since all the lights in my house are off, I'm feeling around for a light switch when my hands get thrown behind my back and I get thrown to the ground and someone sits on top of me. I start looking around when I notice two other people turning off my computer, taking my phone off my desk. All the while dressed in dark clothes and ski masks, so the first thought that goes through my head is that these people are from a gang that has a vendetta against my father who is a cop and locked up a lot of gang members. Also had a hit out of them, the local chapter of the Latin Kings. I ask them if they're in a gang. No response. I ask them if they're here for money. No response. I suddenly get my mouth taped shut, my arms and legs taped up, and a bag put over my head. I hear them rustle through the keys on the hook, and hear them remotely unlock my dad's car. At this point, I'm very clearly shaking. I get lifted up, one person grabs my torso, one person grabs my legs. I get led to the car and thrown in, and they drive off. I drive for about ten minutes before they stop and carry me into a house. After about 10 minutes, they come back with knives and start rubbing them on my arms and face. Once they put the knives away, they rip the bag off my head and in unison say, Why so serious? As I realize these are no kidnappers, but just three of my friends, I follow quite promptly with, Dude, not funny. As they walk away to put the knives and tape away, I get up and walk out and across the street, I just fall to my knees on the sidewalk and have a breath of relief. I get taken home shortly afterwards where I spend the rest of my night awake with all the lights on. Scariest, most relieving story of my life. Holy cow, I bet! Now, uh, if you guys don't know, uh, I mentioned uh, in the story that uh, he had, his father rather, had a hit out against him with the Latin Kings, and if you're unfamiliar, they are one of the largest gangs in North America. I believe North America. And uh, they might even be one of the largest in the world. So it, it, it's kind of serious when you, you know, think about it. But this is a very unique story. I've always heard of people who, like, joke around about it. And uh, I've heard stories here and there of these sort of uh, fake kidnappings where their friends take them. But I have never heard of it actually being acted out. And to such an extent where they're rubbing knives against your face. I mean, this is just mind-blowing that they would have had the mindset to do this. And uh, I I've got to I've got to give them some credit. That, that must have been orchestrated perfectly to be able to have everything fall into place. That they can, you know, get into your house, <laughs> they can subdue you, take you to, I assume, their house, and then reveal to you, haha, we're joking. And, you know, it, it is a little, you know, on the side of criminal, but uh, I, I'm assuming you didn't press charges or anything. They are your friends. And one hell of a story. Thank you for sending this in. 
I feel like this is uh, definitely Fridays with Foster material. So thank you. Alright, I don't have any weird names for this next one, so let's just get right down to it. Hey Foster, I thought you could help me with a problem. I'm a sophomore in high school and I have no friends. It isn't that I don't want to make friends, but I move around a lot and it is hard to be the new guy so often. I've now gone to five different schools and I haven't had a best friend since fifth grade. I want to be able to get to know people, but I'm afraid I will just move again to a new school and I will lose contact. Any advice would be awesome. Dude, you came to the exact right guy. You say you've gone to uh, five different schools and you're a sophomore, which uh, I believe is, uh, what was that, grade 10? Uh, on <laughs> when I was in grade 10, I think that was probably my ninth different school. My family moved around so often that it was incredibly difficult for me to hold on to friendships, and I, I know exactly where you're coming from. Now, the, the real great thing about the age we live in, like even compared to when I was your age, the internet has come such a far away, I, I'm going to reveal something about myself right now. I don't have friends in my normal everyday life. Everyone that I consider a friend is someone that I know through the internet. Now, you know, if that I said that, you know, 10 years ago, it would have been something totally out of the norm and really strange and people would look at you like some kind of weird outcast, but by today's standard, that's just kind of normal. And all my uh, friendships, you know, no matter how many times I move, the beauty of having these, you know, internet friendships is it doesn't change. You know, I moved five times since I started playing Xbox Live, and I have kept the same group of friends, or I had kept the same group of friends for a very long time. And, you know, even, even uh, on the internet, you know, sometimes you move apart and whatnot, but that's aside from the point. That's my own, like, personal issues. But the point is, if you don't have any friends and you're afraid to make friends in high school, first off, you're in high school, which means you have an opportunity that, like, at my age, I can't just go out to, you know, a, a grocery store, walk up to guys, hey, do you, uh, do you play Halo? You want to be my friend? That doesn't work. But in high school, you have sort of a, a, a means to become friends with people. You know, I've said this multiple times that high school is like the time that you can walk up to someone, anyone, and go, hey, you know, aren't you in, uh, I don't know, uh, our science lab together? Uh, do you want to study sometime? Oh, you like Minecraft? I like Minecraft. And, you know, you move from there and you become friends like that. And if that's not for you, if you are afraid of moving away, you know, e even if you meet them in high school, you can still become friends on Xbox Live. And if you move to a different high school, you can still have that connection. And if you don't have Xbox Live, you know, you have an internet connection. There is other means that you can remain friends with people while moving around a lot. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that if you ask, there are people in the comments section, I know I don't want to reveal identities, I keep everything 100% anonymous, but there are people in the comments section that I'm sure would be fine with being friends. If you don't have a friend and you're listening to this right now, ask for a friend in the comments section. And remember, I always consider everyone that watches my videos a friend. So if you guys want to send me a friend request on Steam, I'm Foster the Canadian on Steam. You want to send me one on Xbox Live, I'm Foster Canadian on Xbox Live. Foster the Canadian on Steam, Foster Canadian on Xbox Live, just to clarify. And, you know, we'll hang out with you. You know, I, I'm not on Xbox Live or Steam a whole lot, and when I am, I'm usually in a pretty big group of people. And, you know, maybe you can meet a friend that way. So I hope this works out for you. All the best, and, uh, yeah, good luck. Alright, guys, as a quick bonus, considering hockey season is finally about to get started again, really excited and hyped up about that, I'm going to discuss with you my worst hockey injury. Now, it, it's nothing, like, horrific, so uh, don't worry about that, but let's get on with it. Alright, so I was, uh, I guess, about 14 years old, and uh, I'm getting ready in the locker room. This is what's funny about it, is I'm in the locker room, like, getting my equipment on, don't even have my mask on. It's a practice, and the kid that does this is on my team, so he's, like, I, I guess he's either trying to fake me out or whatever. He says he was practicing his slap shot. But he basically walks up to me and smacks me in the face as hard as he could with his hockey stick. And uh, it shatters 
one of my uh, teeth, and it, it, if you've never had a shattered tooth, it's basically pop rocks in your mouth. It split my tongue open, and it, it was bleeding to the point where if I kept my mouth closed, my cheeks would fill up with blood. I thought I was going to die. They almost had to stitch my tongue back up. Not a fun time. And uh, the entire time that was going on, like, he was, uh, he, he never apologized, but he was just, like, trying to cover, like, oh, I was just, uh, practicing my slap shot, he got in the way. Meanwhile, I was sitting on the bench, just, like, getting ready. So, I, I, I don't know, I, that's just a fun little story that I thought I'd throw into, you know, fill up the time between, uh, stories. Because I, I didn't get a third story this week, I apologize, guys. And, uh, remember to keep Fridays with Foster going. I need you guys to send in stories so that I can... You know, continually do this, because this is a series that I really love to do, and uh, I'm getting a really positive response from it. So, uh, yeah, send in anything that you guys think would be interesting. Alright, friends, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this, and if you did, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up, which is a like. Big surprise. I didn't know that. My mind just got blown. Foster's mind blown? Again? Wow. What was I talking about? I keep losing my train of thought. Foster's... Fridays with Foster? Yeah, that's what I was talking about. If you like this episode and you want to watch more, you can click the annotation on the screen to watch more. And uh, remember that if you have an interesting story or you want advice, ask me any question. I, I might put it in next week's episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching. And until next time, this is Foster the Canadian saying see ya.